First of all, I would just like to say I did not plan to continue this story. In fact, quite the opposite. I was going to end it off without a proper send-off, although that would be quite irresponsible of me. And seeing as I haven't ever done that to any story before, as you definitely cannot find that in the video section of my page, I decided that I won't start now. And thus, we are going to be continuing What If Goku Had The Nine Tails, and you guys did vote for this. So if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button and subscribe button, that would be very much appreciated. Although you don't have to if you don't want to, so... I guess it's kind of up to you. It'd just be really nice. Anyway, let's get into the story of this what if. I had the mic way too close to my mouth there. Now, as I said before, this will be focusing on the Frieza saga. And as Goku and Vegeta knock on the Galactic Emperor's door, metaphorically of course, the tyrant himself would answer, powering up into his final form to greet the two Saiyans knowing that Vegeta was going to show up eventually, and that given the nature of his dojutsu, he would be incredibly powerful, and an absolute nuisance to deal with. So he didn't want to pull any punches, he wanted to get it over with as quick as possible, and knowing there was a high likelihood that Vegeta was the legendary Super Saiyan, well Frieza wasn't going to take any chances. We know how scared he is of the golden-haired form, after all. Well, he didn't know it was a golden-haired form, but you know what I mean. Now, with his incredible might on full display, Vegeta is confident in his decision to get back up in the form of Kakarot, who would utilize the power of the Nine Tails, powering up into a new godly sort of transformation, that being KCM2 or Kurama Link Mode 2. Yeah, I know, KCM and KLM doesn't exactly mix, but the Naruto community is weird, okay? We give weird names to things. Either way, Goku is incredibly powerful, and his strength is on full display, much like Frieza's. And after Vegeta activates his three Tamoya Sharingan, the gloves are off, and everyone would begin to battle. Vegeta and Goku in perfect synergy, something they had learned to do over the last few months, while Frieza is just incredibly tanky and incredibly powerful. Now, although Goku and Vegeta each were incredibly strong, they weren't exactly able to match up with Frieza's 120 million max power level. Seeing as the two of them each had power levels around the 5 million range at base, and each of their respective transformations only boosted them up three times, meaning that they were able to get up to 15 million, but still, together, they're only 30 million, which is 25% of Frieza's max power. I get I used a lot of numbers there, but... When power levels are still relevant, they are sort of what makes the deciding factor for a fight. So, as Frieza continues to mollywomp the two Saiyans, all hope seems lost. Seeing as this was the strongest they were possibly able to grow, in their base forms at least, and now they are still being proven to be overpowered. Although this isn't the end of the fight, as Goku and Vegeta did still have something left in reserve that being the Great Ape Power. I probably didn't make a huge amount of emphasis on this before, but Goku would still have his tail, and thereby still be able to transform into a Great Ape, and for obvious reasons, Vegeta would as well. And with the two giant apes together, they are enough to take down Frieza, each having collective power levels of 150 million. Although, a problem does arise in the fact that Goku never managed to tame this beast. Kurama was able to intervene when Goku lost control, but it wasn't enough. His power was only able to do so much in the form of controlling Goku's Ozaru might. The point is that this battle would be legendary. Rather than two great apes fighting against a overgrown lizard, Instead, it's two great apes fighting each other while said lizard is in the background, trying not to get killed from a stray blast, as although he is comparable to one of the Ozarus, the two combined are just a different force to be reckoned with. 
Now, like I said, Kurama wouldn't be able to fully overtake Goku's mind. Before, maybe he could've, but now, with such great power under no one's control, Kurama can't take said control. Instead, all he can do is try and limit the strength Goku is able to access in this unstable state, and hopefully allow Vegeta to overpower his fellow Saiyan combatant, that way he doesn't end up killing the wrong person here. Vegeta would be able to somewhat subdue Goku, but he isn't trying to deal any lasting damage, rather trying to get Goku to actually take control over himself. If Goku ends up dying here, then Frieza could very easily come in and take Vegeta down, as the Saiyan might sustain some injury if he is able to actually defeat Goku, or at least in the process of trying to defeat Goku. So Vegeta is again trying just to calm his fellow Saiyan down, and after a while it does seem to work. Goku's glowing golden hair beginning to shrink down as his power is being contained by Kurama. But then there's an added side effect here. Goku begins to shrink down as his power is being limited but controlled, and then exploding outward as he has attained a new form any Saiyan would dream of, that being Super Saiyan 4. Although, not exactly. This would be more akin to the Super Saiyan 4 form we saw in canon, well, in Dragon Ball GT canon, but it isn't that form. Instead, it's actually Goku mixing his Saiyan biology with Kurama's, well, whatever we're saying he is here. Demon God Fox? I don't really know. Either way, it's a conglomeration of the two incredible powers. Whereas Goku has glowing golden fur crossed around his body, while his hair glows in a similar golden light. Vegito would proclaim that this is the Super Saiyan, while Goku says it's something different, as both him and Kurama have perfectly linked, and their minds are now one, in a fusion-like state similar to Vegito. And now, with Goku in full control, well, half control because Kurama is equally in control, they would target Frieza once more. And when I say he is screwed, I mean royally so. As Vegeta would begin preparing his own blast, Goku would have already taken Frieza down with a flurry of punches. This wouldn't be the same level of power that one would get from a regular Super Saiyan 4 transformation, but it's pretty damn close. In fact, I would say it's even stronger than Super Saiyan 3, and only barely being a Super Saiyan form in this scenario. But either way, Frieza is killed and Vegeta is astonished. He is somewhat still a morally good character, but nowhere near what he would have been in, say, the Majin Buu saga of the original events despite the fact I am portraying Goku and Vegeta on good grounds here. He's a bit jealous, envious of Goku's incredible might, but realizes there's nothing he can do to change that. So instead, he just parts ways with the Saiyan, preparing to go off and take down the remnants of Frieza's empire, while Goku goes and gets back to Earth, the place he has gone to call home and realizing that Kurama has fulfilled his duty as being the, well, kind of guardian angel for Goku, he would begin to slink back into a more peaceful state, not needing for Goku to rely on his power any further, as whenever a actual threat comes to Earth, Kurama can just be summoned forth and would be able to quickly dispatch of that foe. So he kind of gets the peaceful afterlife he wanted, except he doesn't need to actually leave Goku's body, and every now and again would get to actually participate in a pretty fun battle, seeing as anything Goku would need to pull Kurama out for would definitely be a challenge, and would be incredibly fun, seeing as Kurama would still have a battle spirit of his own. In fact, you could even say Kurama himself was a battle spirit but seeing as nothing really challenging would partake on Earth for quite some time, let's focus in on Vegeta. 
The Saiyan Prince would not only dismantle the remnants of Frieza's army, but also kill his father and brother, King Cold and Cooler. As with the training that Vegeta would be undergoing attempting to get to the same level as his fellow Saiyan, he's getting incredibly powerful, yet still not able to compare to Goku. Great Ape and Sharingan is an incredible combo, but not one that will ever be able to match up to Goku's incredible might in his new Baryon Mode-like form. Well, it's not exactly like Baryon Mode, more similar to Super Saiyan 4, although a cool in-universe name would be Baryon Mode, in reference to the form Naruto used against Ishiki. And yes, I know it doesn't resemble Baryon Mode in any way, but still, just go with me here. It's a very cool name for a very cool form, even though I will continue to refer to it as Super Saiyan 4. Tangent aside, Vegito would continue trying to find new ways to increase his power, such as mixing Super Saiyan with Sharingan, as eventually he would be able to unlock the golden-haired form. And even though this is very effective and very powerful, it just doesn't seem to be able to actually stack up to what is effectively the fourth variant of said transformation, even with Sharingan attached. So Vegeta continues training, getting stronger and finding new ways to grow, but he's still at a wall. Eventually, he'd be able to gain access to Super Saiyan 2, making incredible pace with the insane potential he would get from having the Sharingan, something that is typically only wielded by people with incredible potential. Either way, even this buff wasn't enough to progress him farther than his fellow Saiyan, so he seeks divine intervention in the form of the Shinto gods, beings that will play somewhere above the Supreme Kai but still far below the gods of destruction. As you might remember from part 1, Kurama was saved from a horrible death by the goddess of the sun Amaterasu, and Amaterasu here would lend similar assistance to Vegeta, although instead of saving him from death, saving him from a life continuously behind his rival. So she gives him aid in the form of awakening his Mangekyo Sharingan, telling him that the only way he'll be able to grow stronger than Goku is to gain access to his emotions, not letting them hinder him but rather empower him, using his hatred as a way to grow stronger and faster, and once he has full control over his emotional state, he will be far stronger than anyone could even dream of. And so, with his training underway, he begins gaining access to the Black Flames of Amaterasu, which allow him to greatly amplify his physical attacks as well as key-based as well as key-based energy shots, which is probably the coolest way to hype up basic key blasts and the Gallic Gun, which right now is basically all he has under his arsenal. But don't worry, that will change, as he begins developing new sorts of attacks, such as the Final Flash, Final Shot Attack, among others. This would all be done by the fact that Vegeta isn't really undergoing strength training right now, rather training maintaining himself and gaining access to everything he has deep below. That sounds like a horrible innuendo, but I assure you it isn't as gross and sexual as you might think. Rather, Vegeta is gaining access to all the power he has stored up inside. Think about Gohan, the potential he has, and how every Uchiha in Naruto has comparable potential, at least in verse comparisons. Vegeta would have this same thing but in spades, and if he accesses it, unleashes his potential, he'll be able to grow stronger than basically anybody else, Goku included. So he is taking time to master himself, as well as increase his overall strategic ability, such as making new moves, like I said before. And after a while, he's able to fully unleash his own potential with the aid of Amaterasu, although he would still go and train with other Shinto gods, such as Susano, Kamui, and other beings that were named after the Mangekyo abilities, or the other way around, because that sounds absolutely absurd, but still. 
Vegito would begin to train with these other gods, gaining access to the abilities that were shown in Naruto, although to lesser extents. For Kamui, he is able to use it the way that Obito had used it in that show, although to a much lesser extent, as there he was basically untouchable. So Vegito would be able to evade certain attacks, although not constantly and not his whole body, as that's just far too busted. As for Susano, this would probably be the most important god he would train under, as it gives him access to the ultimate shield and ultimate defense that is Susano, an armor that will coat his and entire lend body incredible defense from any attacks even the ones that land, because, as I mentioned, Kamui would lend him incredible evasive powers. So, after training with all of the Shinto gods, Vegeta is basically unstoppable, although he does still wonder if he'll be able to beat Goku. That raw power advantage that Goku had was incredible, but all of the gods he had trained under would assure him that nobody, and I mean nobody, would be able to stand up to his new might, even though that's not exactly true, something that would be proven once he returns to Earth and faces off against Cell. And that's where we're going to be ending things for today. This video might seem a little sloppy, and that's because I refuse to revise or correct any mistakes I definitely didn't make because I'm perfect. Of course, this is all a joke, I really just wanted to get this video out as fast as possible, and also be able to finish this story as quick as possible, as I originally wanted to finish it by just ending it abruptly, but that didn't seem fair. So rather, I'll give it a somewhat proper send-off while also not taking too much time to delay any further endeavors. But now that I have all of that out of the way, I hope all of you have an absolutely marvelous day. I know, Dr. Seuss over here with these rhymes, but still, I hope all of you have an absolutely marvelous 2024 and enjoy the time you still have, as the purge is coming and I'm coming for every last one of you. But still, this is, always has been, and always will be, The Irishman. Talk to you guys later, have a nice day, bye.